Good afternoon. This is my case study on parental apathy for the winter intercession class of school community relations at Fort Hayes State University. So for each of the subheadings and the categories in the case study, I did its own. I made a little um, slide projection for each category. So the first one, of course, is the problem identification and analysis of this particular situation at this school. A couple things to know just about my presentation in general. Um, I, what I value when my students do this um, is to put what's most important in a different color or a highlight of some sort so it can kind of stick out on the slide. Um, so throughout my presentation, I'll have little um, purple phrases or sentences that I find to be most important on the slide. The other thing to know about my presentation is that I will be assuming the role of Mrs. Rose for the remainder of the study. Um, so when I use personal pronouns like I or we or our, it will be as the assistant principal Mrs. Rose in this community. Okay, so let's start with what I know. I know that I'm a first year assistant principal um, and therefore maybe a little bit behind in terms of what happens in this community. My observations of the school so far, and unfortunately, is that there's a really limited program uh, or organization for parent involvement, such as no PTA or PTO or volunteer opportunities for parents in the community. And I also know, unfortunately, that my principal says and kind of backs this sentiment that there's just this sense of apathy that kind of pervades this school community culture in general. In a subsequent meeting that I held with the principal or that we had held together, the principal agreed that we could potentially hold a parent meeting in the near future um, to kind of see what parents' stances on uh, involving with our school. Unfortunately, um, when we sent out a little letter to students to give to their parents about this informational meeting, only eight parents showed up. So this just only further reiterated the principal's feelings and assumptions about the culture at our school. And in fact, he actually suggested that we cancel this meeting for the lack of turnout. There are several things that I do need to know. I, I know I need to know that since I want to continue with the meeting, would the principal even allow that for, to happen? And if I did continue this meeting, um, what would he want me to say? Or what will he want me to say to these parents that showed up? I obviously need to know more about the community's demographics in general. I need to know about the demographics, their job market, and just kind of the overall makeup of the community so I can better assess if the principal's assumptions are valid or not. I also need to know how the information about this meeting was delivered to students who were supposed to give that information to their parents, and I need to know if there's better ways that we can improve our communication based on our population at our school. And finally, I just need to know why these eight parents showed up. Uh, they obviously have something to say or something to contribute. And since the principal had originally only said that he wanted a small advisory group out of this um, meeting, maybe these eight parents would like to be a part of that small advisory group. Eight seems like a really good number to get some initial boots on the ground effort towards a school community improvement. So overall, the identification of the problem is that the school and the community are not working together in a harmonious way. The lack of parent organization at this level is eroding the foundation of trust between the school and the community at large. So because of the communication problems and because of the inability for our school to kind of uh, connect with this community, it's seeming like it is hurting student success and hurting our school success um, without this involvement. So there's a couple of proposed plans of action and strategies for implementation. This is the longest section of this case study um, because there's so many things that kind of go into it. So my plan of action to resolve this problem would be to review current structures and improve the lines of communication. I would also like to brainstorm ideas with this advisory group and my administrative team and just kind of our school uh, leaders in general. And then I'd like to implement brainstormed ideas and evaluate their effectiveness um, as we kind of continue in the next successive months. I want to be clear that these steps would not be something that would happen in order. I feel like all of these steps would be happening simultaneously. It would not be a, um, it would not be a stepped out process. It would be a cohesive look at, into solving this issue. So my first strategy for implementation would be to review and communicate. I really need to clarify and review what systems are currently in place already for parents to receive any information. Um, there's probably lots, but maybe they just need some refining, but I need to review what those are. So maybe we have a marquee outside our school that parents rely on. Are there newsletters that are sent out weekly or monthly or yearly? Uh, what kind of system we have for emails? And 
teacher communication, what kind of communication avenues do teachers take to get involved with parents in our school? Are there fundraising efforts being made successfully with clubs and organizations within the school already? I just need to review what we currently have. Obviously, um, one of the most important parts of this um, meeting is that the eight parents came and they showed up and they wanted to be here. So I can't dismiss these eight parents. I, I want to keep them here so that we can talk about where we can go from here. I obviously need to understand and interview and communicate with these parents about what they want and value for their school and their kids. This meeting doesn't have to drag on forever, but I, I do want to get a sense of why they showed up um, to review those, those reasons and communicate with them about where we can go from here. I'd want to discuss our mission and vision statements um, and places that we would maybe need some help in the future um, by partnering with an advisory group or a, maybe down the road like a PTA. And I need to mobilize resources in the school already to improve communication with parents in the community, such as through student council, maybe some volunteer-based clubs in the school already. And with this group, group, I'd like to communicate that if they do want to meet from here on out, that we would establish some meeting times, some places, and some norms for our future work. The second thing I need to do in my plan of action is brainstorm. We need to brainstorm together. Based on what our kids need from my perspective and our principal administrative team perspective, based on what they think, um, it, we need to brainstorm ways in which we can mobilize our resources in this community. I need to collect more data about our, our school demographics. I need to know the typical job market. I need to know our income level um, and decide because of those informational routes what ways of communication can be done to reach as many parents as possible. Maybe distributing a flyer to kids to give to parents uh, was maybe not the best way to get information out there. Um, what, were, what are some potential ideas in which we could get information out to our community? Maybe we could establish a Twitter handle. Maybe our community really relies on radio announcements, local radio announcements. Uh, maybe with cell phones we could do all call recordings, things like that. I'd also like to brainstorm roles in which this advisory group, um, ways in which this advisory group could take form in our school. Um, I'd like to look at other existing models of parent committees as guides. Um, so maybe PTO structure, uh, maybe it was just a weekly, monthly meeting. Maybe we just do it all electronically via email um, and conference calling, things like that. I'd also like to see in, in a brainstormed kind of way if there are other networking opportunities that these eight parents have with other people in our community, such as through neighborhoods, maybe through carpools, are there local business arenas in which these eight parents could get the word out about what we're trying to do uh, for our school's success. Um, and then I'd also like to, in my brainstorming, just kind of discuss with student groups that are already at the school what they would like or what they think they need to improve their education in general. And finally, I want to implement and evaluate communication models. So I would want to adjust accordingly for the successes and failures of this advisory parent group um, and just kind of use some feedback from the parents to determine what needs to be fixed either within the group or what has been going well with some of the efforts they've been making. Obviously, I would keep the invitation open to other parents in the community at all times, um, saying that it's an open-door policy and we could um, really benefit from subcommittees, uh, subgroups uh, from here on out. I'd also like students to give us feedback about their own parents and their own parent involvements um, and their parents' visibility um, and think about ways in which we could get some other parents involved with our, with our work. And after, of course, brainstorming the ideas for our advisory committee about communicating to a larger swath of our parents, I'd want to implement those plans and evaluate their effectiveness. I feel like any new model of communication would be judged on its effectiveness by when we would hold additional meetings and seeing if our numbers of parents would increase. We would know if we're doing a good job if more parents start to show up to be a part of our process. So it's time to resolve the issues based on promoting the success of all students. The resolution to the problem is relatively simple, it seems like to me, that we just simply need to improve the communication channels to parents so that it works with their schedules. And in so doing, we have to align our current resources, such as this advisory group, um, so as to model future communication with parents in our community from here on out. However, we have to keep in mind what's best for students. So, Keeping in mind what's best for students, we have to resolve the issue of poor parent involvement and poor organization of volunteer opportunities um, while maintaining a, a strong image. It sounds relatively difficult, actually. But by involving students in the process of communication 
Betterment, we model that a successful organization wants input from its stakeholders, and we show students that through effective communication, more work can be done for all people in any model whatsoever, whether it's a school or a business or otherwise. So it's a good, it's a good way of modeling a kind of democratic um, setup for students at gen in general. By improving communication with parents, we're demonstrating that we value their input. So when parents kind of buy into our school mo model and our efforts, the school culture in general improves, which of course then directly correlates to improved student performance. Um, and as I always say, I feel like when parents care, students will care. And I think that can't hurt um, the direction that we're going in our school. So now it's time to debrief the problem by reflecting on what I was thinking, feeling, and valuing, and un identifying unresolved or open issues. When thinking about this issue, I was thinking that the previous ways of parent involvement have been really executed poorly, and that the parents themselves are probably not at fault for this. This sounds like a potential school problem. I was thinking that maybe I was stepping out of line, especially considering my boss's stance on this issue. I was con concerned that I was maybe stepping on some previous toes so to speak, and that was concerning to me. And I was thinking that maybe I, my goals and plans to truly fix parent involvement may not work. Um, I hope they do, but I was thinking that they might not if some things at their core were not changed. I was feeling really defeated, especially when the principal aired his doubt in our community. I feel like that's such a negative um, view to have of what we can do in the, in the surrounding culture. I was really frustrated at his lack of wanting to brainstorm ideas to help the situation. I, I, I liked that he wanted, he gave me an okay to, to start this meeting, but I was frustrated at the onset. And I really felt like a desperate energy and urgency to kind of fix this issue as soon as possible. I really felt like I was valuing my overall views of school within the community. I think schools and communities can be such a positive uh, relationship, and I was valuing that when calling this meeting and, and setting up this group. I valued my input from all vested parties and stakeholders like parents, teachers, and administrators. I was valuing my commitment to timeliness and a positive relationship in general between schools and communities at large. Some unresolved issues might be just the underlying cause of the poor involvement in the past, um, something that could hopefully be resolved by collecting more data about the community. Some of the issues still that are unresolved is my hope that the eight parents will want to continue their in initial involvement and interest in our school. If fewer than eight people are part of this advisory group, it's possible that our group could disband somehow. I hope also that eight people is enough to foster some support for our school, and hopefully that those changes and that support would be recognized by other parents in our community. Another potentially unresolved issue is just the principal's assumptions in general about this community, and those assumptions might be really hard to break when it's all said and done. And I'm concerned that those stereotypical notions are going to be um, continued as we go forward. And so now comes the time for my reflection on the success, um, by promoting success and collaborating with families and community, fam community members using Standard 4. Component one of collaborating with families to promote the success of the school. By working with the eight parents, I kind of, and still making sure that we held the meeting, I showed that I valued their time, input, and community and information to help all of our students. I encouraged the data collection and the understanding of the underlying problems to show that I care about how our school succeeds and recognize that its success can be more direct um, with their help. I worked with existing groups such as student council, um, and other volunteer-based clubs in our school to value, show my value in the relationships garnered with, within our school and those groups' independent work outside of our school. Finally, by analyzing data within our community and responding to those needs, I'm showing that I'm flexible and responsive to the school's demographics and the community at large. I responded to the diverse needs of the community on an ongoing basis because um, because of that research demographic, um, I'm improving communication channels based on what my community members need and do outside of our school day. I used network opportunities um, and was able to reconsider previous methods of communication and discuss those. I enacted a weekly and monthly advisory meeting to help adjust um, what we needed in our, in our midst, and I enlisted the help of students and parents in the dialogue of what is needed in our school. Finally, I mobilized community resources by enacting the help of my group to involve more people. I revamped previous methods of communication to be responsive to our resources available. And I'm not shutting the door on our perceived lack of want to get involved. I'm finding new avenues in which they can utilize their abilities. 
I enlisted the help of area schools and showed that I'm willing to use a variety of community arenas. Thank you.